the incident of the Big Bang, there should have been equal quantities of matter, antimatter, which annihilated, driving the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. So, by rights, we shouldn't be here. Michio Kaku just revealed declassified photos from Venus by the Soviet Union. Michio Kaku, a prominent scientist and futurist, has presented startling information about declassified Soviet Union images from Venus. These photographs provide a rare look at the strange and fascinating planet, revealing crucial information about its geological characteristics and atmospheric conditions. Michio Kaku's announcement has sparked excitement and curiosity among scientists and space fans alike, owing to his expertise in theoretical physics and prominence in popular science. Today, we'll look at the significance of these declassified images and consider the consequences for our understanding of Venus and the broader field of planetary science. What might these decades-old photographs taken with Soviet optics tell us about this fascinating planet? And are we about to redefine our concept of the universe? Let's dive into a cosmic treasure trove with renowned physicist Michio Kaku, uncovering mysteries that have lain dormant for years among the stars. The cosmic race began decades ago during the Cold War period, which began soon after World War II ended and lasted until the 1980s. It was hard to ignore the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union. Both superpowers were embroiled in a struggle, each attempting to demonstrate their dominance not only in military and political matters, but also in technological and scientific sectors. This rivalry's major battleground became the frontier of space exploration. Indeed, several groundbreaking advances in space technology occurred during this period. The space race was not only about conquering the immense unknown that is space, but also about providing a symbolic stage for these two countries to demonstrate their scientific might and potential to the rest of the world. The Soviet Union, in particular, was eager to demonstrate its skills in this area. The launch of Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite, by the Soviet Union in 1957 was a watershed moment. This was a truly revolutionary occurrence. Sputnik's launch signaled the start of a new era in space research. The little satellite had a huge influence as it orbited the Earth, sending its unique beeping signal. It represented the beginning of a new race, a race not just to the stars, but also to the international status and recognition. But why was Venus the focus of interest during this time? Venus is our nearest planetary neighbor. It's similar to Earth in many ways, including size and composition, which has led it to being dubbed Earth's sister planet. However, as it is sometimes the case with siblings, there might be significant disparities. And the major question was, how similar was Venus to Earth? Could it perhaps function as a sort of second home for humans in space? These concerns piqued the interest of experts and the general public alike, and the Soviet Union was keen to discover solutions. The era of Venera missions thus began. The Soviet Union, in particular, launched a series of spacecraft to investigate Venus. These missions sought to learn more about the planet's atmosphere, surface, and overall conditions. Michio Kaku discusses photographs of Venus from the Soviet Union's Venera probes in his book, which were the first and only spacecraft to return images from another planet's surface. To add to the discussion, it's worth noting that Venus was a target for numerous expeditions throughout this time period. Exploring Venus isn't like going for a walk in the park. The conditions are extraordinarily harsh with scorching temperatures that could melt lead clouds, teeming with sulfuric acid and atmospheric pressure that could flatten a human. But the Soviets were undeterred. They were prepared to meet these difficulties head on. Venera, the Soviet Union's ambitious space mission launched in 1961, changed the course of space travel. The Venera missions consisted of a series of spacecraft designed to study Venus's atmosphere, surface, and overall environment. These missions provided invaluable data and insights into the conditions on Venus, which had long remained a mysterious and inhospitable planet. Overall, the Venera program significantly advanced our knowledge of Venus and paved the way for future space missions to other planets. It demonstrated the feasibility of landing and conducting scientific investigations on other worlds, inspiring subsequent missions like the Mars rovers and the ongoing exploration of other celestial bodies. Despite early disappointments, the Soviet Union persisted, launching Venera 2 the following year. Despite its inability to reach Venus, Venera 3 achieved success in 1965 with a successful descent module capable of surviving on the planet's surface. 
The Soviet Union's next mission, Venera 4, changed the game by successfully reaching the surface of Venus. The expedition discovered that carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas that traps heat in the atmosphere, was abundant in Venus's atmosphere. This revelation helped scientists better comprehend Venus's temperature and geology, as well as a possible future situation for Earth if greenhouse gases continue to accumulate in the atmosphere. Venera 4 also determined that Venus does not have a worldwide magnetic field that protects humanity from hazardous solar winds and radiation. This lack of a magnetic field showed that life on Venus was unlikely, which was a significant insight into the origin and evolution of planetary magnetic fields. This discovery helped us grasp the habitability of other planets in our solar system and beyond. In 1969, following the successful launch of Venera 4, two more probes, Venera 5 and Venera 6, were launched towards Venus. These spacecraft were built to be stronger than their predecessors and equipped with cutting-edge scientific sensors to collect more precise atmospheric data. Venera 5 was launched on January 5, 1969 with a mission profile similar to Venera 4. For 53 minutes, Venera 5 launched a capsule holding a set of scientific instruments while the probe dropped under its parachute, sending crucial data back to Earth. The probe examined the chemical composition of Venus's atmosphere, the distribution of oxygen and hydrogen, atmospheric density at altitude, atmospheric lighting, and temperature. Venera 5, which launched January 10, 1969, was a spacecraft designed to investigate cosmic particle streams, assess the distribution of oxygen and hydrogen in the atmosphere, and monitor atmospheric pressure and temperature. It entered the Venusian atmosphere on May 17, 1969, one day after Venera 5. Venera 6 relayed data back to Earth for 51 minutes during its descent, corroborating Venera 4's findings of high temperatures, pressures, and carbon dioxide content in Venus's atmosphere. The Venera probes, which were designed to explore Venus, returned vital data to Earth. Venera 7, launched in August 1970, was a game-changing mission, as it was the first spacecraft to successfully land on another planet and transmit data back to Earth. It was outfitted with temperature, pressure, and atmospheric density sensors, as well as an accelerometer and a radar altimeter. The flight to Venus took some time, and corrections were performed using the onboard engine. The lander hit the surface of Venus at roughly 59 kilometers per hour when it arrived in December of the same year. Despite the challenges, the tapes continued to roll, and 23 minutes of feeble signals were located on them, suggesting that Venera 7 had actually landed on Venus. The probe managed to send back data for around 20 minutes during its brief stay on the surface, recording a surface temperature of around 887 degrees Fahrenheit and an estimated pressure of around 1300 psi. Venera 8, launched in 1972, was a mission with certain important differences. It was intended to examine Venus's atmosphere and surface, but the hand landing went much more smoothly this time. Venera 8 had temperature, pressure and light sensors, as well as an altimeter, gamma ray spectrometer, gas analyzer, and radio transmitters. The trip to Venus took around 118 days, including a mid-course correction. Venera 8 was able to send data during the descent detecting a decrease in illumination at 35 to 30 kilometers of altitude and wind speeds of less than 1 meter per second below 10 kilometers. Venera 8 continued to transmit data for more than 50 minutes after landing before succumbing to severe surface conditions. It corroborated Venera 7's high surface temperature and pressure measurements and measured the light level, which was comparable to an overcast day on Earth with around 1 kilometer of visibility. Furthermore, photometer observations from Venera 8 revealed for the first time that clouds on Venus end at a high altitude, and the atmosphere is rather clean from there down to the surface. The Soviet Union's investigation of Venus began with the Venera 7 and Venera 8 missions, which advanced our understanding of the planet significantly. Despite difficulties such as a less than perfect landing, the Soviets analyzed the failures and used what they learned to improve future missions. According to Venera 8 data, the atmospheric pressure on Venus is 90 times that of Earth at sea level. The sensor on the Venera 8 remained operational and supplied useful results. The project took on a new twist from Venera 9 through Venera 12 with cameras capable of visually capturing the planet. These early photographs depicted a hard, rocky landscape dotted with impact craters, jagged escarpments, and enormous plains soaked by ancient lava. Venera 13 and 14 followed in 1981, each with landers outfitted with high-tech acoustic gear capable of monitoring the speed of winds blowing over Venus' surface. The true game-changers, however, were Venera 15 and 16, which were outfitted with powerful radar-based imaging hardware capable of mapping the surface of Venus from an eccentric orbit. 
Despite the hurdles and setbacks, the Venera Probe's legacy continues to inspire fresh endeavors to better comprehend our cosmic neighbors. The probes captured the odd sounds of Venus's winds, the first time any sound was captured on a planet other than our own. The probes also delved into the Venusian soil, or regolith, and analyzed a sample, marking the first time humanity had analyzed the composition of soil from another planet. In conclusion, Michio Kaku's latest discovery about declassified photographs from Venus acquired by the Soviet Union has created tremendous interest and enthusiasm among scientists and space enthusiasts. These photographs provide a valuable opportunity to study and comprehend the enigmatic planet, revealing insight into its geological features and atmospheric conditions. With Michio Kaku's expertise in theoretical physics and his love for researching the wonders of the universe, we may expect additional exploration and analysis of these declassified photographs to expand our understanding of Venus and potentially open new insights into planetary science as a whole. What are your thoughts on this matter? Do you believe Venus will one day be habitable for mankind, or will Earth become Venus in the following decades? Let us know what you think in the comments, and make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.